Yo, what's up people? My name is Tanachi and I'm back in the world of Satisfactory. Alrighty, hope you're keeping really well. Alright, so the story continues. Back in around November when Update 5 came out, I was doing Eden. And Eden kind of had a few different like districts or areas. And one of those areas was Atom Industries, which is right in front of you here on the top right there. And I remember when I did this, I thought to myself, that could be a possibility maybe to expand on the whole Atom Industries kind of concept. So the idea can kind of go something like this. In Eden, Atom Industries had their own small little setup, uh, their own little district, like a small concession that you kind of get at shopping malls with different brands having their own outlet or concession but their main facility can be in the rocky desert again a high-tech facility uh, somewhere in the red forest area and uh, so that's what i'm going to be doing on this episode i've done two uh, builds so we'll be taking all of the uh, basic items from nero x3 and the shard and we'll be sending them on to a more traditional style factory just to get the bulk of the items done but once the more advanced items are prepared there after that part we'll take all those items and we'll head on to the culmination of this whole project into Atom Industries high-tech facility kind of in the Red Forest area and yeah I didn't really plan this but kind of give the world a coherent and somewhat consistent story uh, with like different factions and groups within the in the world kind of like all vying for their well they're all kind of sharing the the resources and trading resources with each other I mean initially I wanted to have like the alien sector kind of like at conflict some kind of conflict with the northern side of the map it doesn't really work out that way because they're sharing resources and stuff like that but it's out of the bollocks anyway i'm taking it too seriously anyway so atom industries a more of a serious corporate industrial kind of brand outfit the kind of thing that you might imagine in the future a large corporate industry very efficient very cold very clinical and um Am I taking this too seriously? Have I gone too far? Probably, but I'm still going to continue. Anyway, yes, yes, on with the show. Okay, so coming just outside Eden uh, from this exit here, if we come outside, we have this build that I did some time ago, which has a configurable constructor. Just here, I've expanded it and I've added a train station. And here we're picking up just a little bit of excess items that are going into sinks at the end of Eden that are not being used. So some rubber, some aluminum casing, and a few steel pipes as well. But let's take this little train journey on a fast forward. So the train here will drop off some of the items that we had uh, just picked up from Eden. And on this factory, I was doing the Caterium ingots, which are going on to the next factory to turn into quick wire. And at the top here, we were doing the bulk of the steel pipes and the um, aluminium casing. Back down to the train station on platform two. Uh, this train will pick up all of the items that were just dropped off on platform one, plus all the items that are produced here. And then this will head on to X3 to drop off the Caterium ingots. And we'll take this journey as well. I want to fast forward to X3. The train here will drop off those Caterium ingots and upstairs they will turn those into quick wire. And downstairs in the basement we are doing some iron and um, what they call copper ingots which I showed on the last video. And that heads upstairs to the top three floors uh, where they are producing all those stuff into the usual iron and copper stuff. All right, let's continue the train journey onto the next, well, actually the next one is the, the shard, which is just there beyond those trees. The train coming from the shard, which is just coming now in the distance there. Um, I covered that in the last video, so you can see the inside of that on the last video. And uh, that's coming down here as well, together with the train from Nero and from X3, all joined here. We'll be coming to the first part of the new build, Atom Industries main facility in the Rocky Desert, which we turn all those items into the more advanced higher tier items. So here we're doing everything from adaptive control units, high speed connectors, heavy industrial frames. We're also doing batteries. Um, high, did I say that? Yeah, high speed connectors, radio control units, and uh, crystal oscillators. Um, what else we're doing? Um, circuit boards, lots of automated wiring as well, encased industrial beams, all that kind of stuff. So I had a lot to fit in in this. Um, well, I tried to keep it as small as possible and you can see there that, that kind of like arm stretching out over there where all the machines are. Or I've used a system that I've done in the past where I've got like this um, tool central bus system where all the machines kind of get their feet off of and which allows to do a very customizable flexible production unit in a relatively com compact space considering how much is going on 
uh, in this uh, factory. So roughly 140 machines across roughly 12 to 14 different recipes, I think. To me, it looks like a very serious, um, as I mentioned, very serious, clinical, clean, uh, cold, hard corporate industry. Kind of looks like a bit like a prison, to be honest. It's not a place I would want to work, personally. I don't ever seem to put any attention to the main foot entrance. Right here is the main entrance, um, but I never seem to use foot entrances. I'm always usually on the train. I mean, to be honest, I'm not gonna walk here from on the factory. I'm always gonna come here by train, except when I'm on fly mode, of course, which is when I'm building nearly most of the time. But if I'm not building, and then I'm always gonna come to each factory by train or hypertube if I've done that, but I haven't done that here. So train will be the main entrance as it is really on most of my factories. On the front here, I've used quite a few lights behind pillars to try and give like a, a back glow both down there and also up here you can see i've got a lot of lights behind the pillars there um, reflecting off the uh, the wall just to add a little bit of ambience a little bit of uh, lighting effects uh, coming into the main entrance we have the of course the train stations and both the shard and x3 will come and they'll dock at both these two train stations there and nero uh, the train will come and dock here so i haven't spent too long on this particular build in terms of design and aesthetics. I kind of dreaded this build to be honest because it's the most complicated part of the whole project and I just wanted to get on with the kind of like production but I had this kind of open area in the foyer which I wanted to kind of fill in with some random detailing and so this is uh, well I'm not sure I don't know what it is rather odd looking abstract kind of well it is just for a maintenance area yeah I don't know I'm not sure it's uh, probably the most over the top maintenance thing I've ever seen anyway and of course uh, if any kind of um, self-obsessed uh, futuristic industrial corporation they've got plenty of self-advertisement in their own premises uh, trying to rub home and indoctrinate any kind of employees that work here about their own self-importance yeah just lots of self-branding within their own premises as you can imagine any kind of um large futuristic corporate entity might want to try and impose on anyone who visits anyway um so as i said i'm not really paying too much attention to the design on this build just a little bit of stuff here in the foyer entrance area here is like the main center area where we got the controls but um, first of all you may remember i mentioned i kind of underestimated how many items i needed well i mean the iron and copper stuff so in the basement here i've got roughly 70 80 i don't know approximately smelters and constructors uh, producing again more like iron and copper stuff because uh, i did kind of grossly underestimate how many i needed this whole project has ended up being i don't know I haven't counted but I think four or five hundred machines maybe more all of this to produce seven and a half assembly director systems is crazy if you think about it but yeah anyway on the right here we have a little belt giving us the visibility of all the items being produced in the main area which we'll get to in a second control area we have uh, a main power switch which we can turn all of the main machines over there on and off and you've probably seen me use this kind of thing before in various builds where i've got one programmable splitter allowing me to kind of direct all of the production either to a sink or to a train all right so coming on to the main production area here so approximately 68 70 manufacturers and the same again for the assemblers uh, there's two rows so we've got downstairs and exactly the same thing all the way to the end upstairs and got that on both sides again over here and over there as well i've used this system on a couple builds actually not three builds i've used it on my starter factory on a smaller scale and i used it again on area 51 and on also on the mega factory that i did um, before update 5 came out which is the thousand machine very odd looking uh, build that i did in the the southern grassland area and uh, this system does have some pros and cons uh, the pros I would say is it allows you to manage a logistical kind of like nightmare that is trying to organize so many items going to so many different machines and recipes and it allows you to do that in a relatively um, condensed compact area you've got back-to-back -back machines literally touching each other and all of the belts in a very narrow center column here and you've got roughly I think 18 belts going up to the top each machine will have a conveyor lift as you can see going up and down and picking off exactly which item it needs from whichever of the the center conveyor belts that it needs it from and what that kind of allows is to um, very easily configure the setup of machines and recipes you need so for example if i want to change this um, manufacturer to produce another item 
I just change the recipe on the manufacturer and then of course just um, send off more conveyor lists to pick off exactly which resource it needs to produce. So it does allow flexibility in customizing the actual factory area. If you consider how much space this would need normally in a normal traditional factory, if you did like a flatbed, um, different levels, three, four, five, however many like levels you would normally do. It's very efficient in terms of how much space it uses. The negatives I would say is that it doesn't, I mean, it's preference in the day, but it doesn't necessarily look uh, aesthetically pleasing for some I would, I would imagine maybe it does look a little bit kind of messy I guess so that's one of the negatives and also another negative is uh, it's not the easiest or the quickest thing to set up initially it's easier once you've got things set up to change recipes and reconfigure the machines but setting up initially does take a little bit of time because uh, it's not just about setting up this uh, 20 high uh, conveyor center bus system because you've also got to set up the feeding system for this and the bottom belt is the output of all of the assemblers will cycle back around on the bottom belt so that other manufacturers and assemblers can use that output if they need to of course otherwise they'll head on off to the train or sink where I got them going and the same again on the second belt there which is the output of all of the manufacturers which cycles back around on that second belt there so again other machines can use the output if they need to if not they'll just they will head back again to the train or the sink where I got the heading to but otherwise as you can see all the usual items are going backwards and forwards so that all the machines can kind of call off the items they need and these ones are the screws and cables because of the train you've got the loading and unloading uh, issue um, every now and then the items will run dry and you can see that the trains has come and uh, there you go so all the items are coming in but I've got it so there's enough items there to satisfy the machines as they're currently set anyway yeah so that's the system that I've got set up here on this Atom Industries build it's got some pros and cons it's not aesthetically great looking I mean that's preference and that day some people like that I don't mind either style to be honest I like to mix and match my builds and have clean looking builds and then messy looking builds mix and match the the two and again also it's not the quickest and easiest thing to set up initially but once you do set it up it does allow it to configure the, the machine setup we got here very easily and quite quickly and it seems to be working for the most part uh, quite well I am actually running out of shards as you can see here I've only got 14 shards is I only want to use shards that are really genuinely available in the world and if you might have downloaded my save before uh, you may notice you may not of course but you might notice that there's very few uh, power slugs left um, I've basically looted every power slug I could find um, I've gone out of my way to make sure that if I see a power slug um, I would loot it. Uh, I've been kind of reliant on using power shards too often to try and fix, well, fix production where I've kind of underestimated. Or oh, I didn't want to use too many machines or, or try and keep it a little bit smaller. I might go through some old builds and try to uh, see if I can recoup some of some shards and maybe uh, build some more machines to get back some more shards. Well, it's always useful to have some, basically. Okay, so the first part of Atom Industries is done. But now it's time to uh, get away from this depressing prison and all that messy conveyor work and now we can take all our bananas that we're making here and put them onto a train and go and make a fruit salad uh, somewhere else in the uh, red uh, what's it called the red forest yes yes oh dear okay okay so coming back to uh, x3 now you can see the atom industries um, build in the distance there uh, we have a train track subtly just heading off here to the right where we have the entrance to the high-tech facility in the mountains kind of heading up uh, to the red forest where you can see the the train has just dropped off uh, from the other atom industries i tried to get a little bit more creative with the uh, the style and build and uh, I, I like the location it's very small though compared to eden area 51 infinity works because there's only 17 machines here which i personally thought was great because i can concentrate a lot more on the design and a bit more creativity and then having to worry about logistics and getting machines in place and having to feed everything for example but what I'm gonna do is um, I'm thinking I'm gonna do another one of those cinematic tours at first anyway this won't take too long to explore because it's not that big inside compared to the other one so uh, yeah okay so hold on to your bananas and let's roll the film
you know what, my computer's just crying. It's, uh, it's really struggling. I can tell when I'm playing back that video, it's just jumping all over the place and skipping a lot of frames. Anyway, I can't do much about that. You do the best with what you have. And uh, anyway, so this is the um, inside of uh, the new uh, build that I did. As I mentioned, it's a very small kind of um, little build. Only 17 machines and we're only doing seven and a half, uh, what they call the uh, assembly director systems. Um, so we're just doing the cooling systems over here, as you saw. And at the bottom there, on those three machines we're doing, well, it's taking the supercomputers from the other place and the cooling systems from here and then putting them together to make supercomputers and then those supercomputers will head on to the 10 uh, assemblers that we've got at the top here and which are producing the seven and a half assembly director system 0 0.75 each one so all of this was seven and a half bloody assembly i mean what the bloody hell are they assembling and um, what do they do do they make tea i take my tea very seriously so if they make tea i, I, I can justify it to some degree you know what i mean but if they don't make tea coffee i, I, I can deal with coffee if they make coffee um, maybe I can justify it again. I need to know these things, otherwise I'm going to not lose any sleep. I wanted to put a lot more lights around this build. As you can see, I got one floodlight there in the corner. Um, but as soon as I add another light or two, <laughs> the frames just drop massively and uh, they're not great as it is already. So um, I can only really afford to add one light before the performance starts really dropping. Uh, for some reason, lights, I don't know, since update five, the lights really, a massive drain on performance and the computer starts crying well mine does mine does anyway and uh so all right we've got the water and nitrogen coming in here yeah anyway there's not really much to show to be honest it's only a really really small build uh, as you can see but i like it though to be honest it's got a nice feel to it even though it's really really small i guess it's a little bit like eden uh very lush and green if i could add a little bit more lighting it would make the uh make it pop a little bit more but i'm not willing to get the frames per second dropping below 15 just for a little bit of lighting one cool thing about this area though it's got a natural fog it kind of misty as you can see that you can't see below i've got nothing down here it's just literally a foundation um just to, so if you fall down you don't go too far and i've got hypertube leading you back here just in case you do fall down um otherwise there's nothing below except the train station which you saw at the beginning you might be wondering what what is that what is that meant to be and uh, that's meant to be well that's a glorified kettle basically and down there i'm making some green tea peppermint tea as you can see yeah you put your tea bags at the top here somewhere and um i'm going to stop talking about that rubbish anyway so this is it basically here yes and um approximately 500 machines Um, 500 machines, about seven to 8,000 items, approximately 6,000 ingots, um, over four factories. And, um, and, uh, okay, here we go. Yeah, so, um, all of that for this, seven and a half of those things per minute. I mean, I don't know what to say. Um, is it worth it? You know what? Yes, it bloody well is. I wouldn't do it otherwise. If I didn't enjoy it, I wouldn't do it. Anyway, Atom Industries, high-tech facility in the Red Forest. It is kind of satisfying though, to be honest. Uh, once you finish the build and all of the, the things are running smoothly, the trains are going backwards and forwards, the items are flowing, all of the machines, the lights are green or white, maybe if they're overclocked and uh, even though the output is somewhat disappointing in terms of literally uh, the visual output of what you're getting for all that work. I understand, uh, don't get me wrong, I understand why. They've got to try and uh, scale the, um, well, if you think about it, the, the diminishing returns on the sheer volume of items and process resources that you're taking from point A to B to C to D and coming to the combination of a project like this or whatever you're doing. I mean, if you think about how many tons of copper and iron and steel and deuterium, sulfur, all the materials that you're putting together, uh, there must be hundreds of tons. The inefficiency of your machines and literally just to output that, I mean, I mean, what is that? Like 20 kilos or how much, whatever that weighs. And uh, where's all those resources gone to? You know, I'm waffling on about 
rubbish anyway over here we got the um guess what another emergency exit but this time it's a little bit more than an emergency exit we've actually got a drone port <laughs> anyway guys i'm gonna leave it there hope you've enjoyed another project coming to completion in one of these open style builds that i seem to like doing but now i'm going to go and make myself a nice cup of tea and to finish off i'm actually going to jump uh, down this thing which i have actually put a hyper tube at the bottom and so it does actually take you right back down to the beginning and i'm sure that's really good for your health to come down uh, about 100 miles an hour head first into a solid concrete foundation but i tell you what i would do it for a good bloody cup of tea uh, well not bloody i don't want any blood in it but just a cup of tea i really am waffling on it's getting late anyway guys hope you've enjoyed the video thank you for watching <laughs> maybe i'll catch you again soon